the Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Welcome to the Jesse Blake Sports Report. Whether it's your first time here or your last time here, somewhere far in between, I really appreciate that you're here right now. Let's start off with a round of applause. We don't have any time to waste. Thank you to the Texas Rangers. You put the 2023 Toronto Blue Jays out of their misery. I appreciate you. Thank you for doing that. This team is awful. This is the worst Jays team I've ever seen in my entire life. And I'm so happy right now that they got swept. Holy cow, can this team put in the worst effort at all times through nine innings. They can show no heart. They can show no compete. They can have absolutely no ability to come back in a baseball game and if you th- if you think that's that's like hyperbole if you think i'm exaggerating that the jays can't come back in a baseball game they haven't come back in, in a baseball game that they've been trailing by three runs or more since july since july 9th the exact to rewind a little bit the jays today lost to the texas rangers they got swept four games in a row they came into this series in a playoff spot in a wild card spot Texas is chasing them in the standings. They had the opportunity to solidify a wild card spot. This is their biggest series of the season to catch you up to where they are right now. Their biggest series of the season, a game and a half up on a wild card spot with the opportunity to face the team that is chasing them for the spot, to put it home, to make the playoffs and do the thing that you're paid to do is win baseball games. And they responded on Monday. They lost the final score was 10 to 4 on Tuesday 6 to 3 on Thursday. Oh my gosh, Thursday. I was there on Hot Dog Dollar Night on Tuesday. I got to see this disaster in person. On Thursday, 10 to nothing. And today, the last game of the series to salvage anything out of this four game home stand. What did the Blue Jays do? I got to turn down the mic. I'm yelling a little bit too much. What did the Blue Jays do? They responded by losing 9-2 to to the Texas Rangers. They scored two runs on four hits, and two of those hits came in the first inning. In the fifth inning of this ballgame, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. came to the plate with Bo Bichette on second base. Vladimir Guerrero Jr. responded by striking out. In the seventh inning, Vladimir Guerrero Jr. was thrown three fastballs right down the middle of the plate in his at-bat. If you're watching on YouTube, the graphic is on the screen right now. Three fastballs were thrown right down the middle of the plate during his at-bat. What did he do? He swung and missed on all three because this Jays team is a paper tiger. And all season long, They've been protected by some of the best relief pitching, some of the most timely starting pitching that a Blue Jays team has ever seen. And when it's time for the bats to respond, all season long, it has been exactly that. What Vladdy displayed in the fifth and the seventh inning. Men on base, they can't cash them. They can't do anything with their bats all season long. And it finally caught up with them this series. It finally caught up with them. And Texas said, hey, we can get pitching. We're a good baseball team. We have the best hitters in the league. And they showed up with their bats because the Jays pitching luck ran out. You can't, you can't just you can't just have your pitching hold you up for 162 games when you can't get a timely hit. The Jays team is a paper tiger, this 2023 Jays team, and that is why it is so disappointing because they give the illusion of a good baseball team, but but they're not. But when you look at it, when you look at this whole team as a whole, it's it's not a good baseball team. They've gone 17 and 29 versus American League teams that are sitting in a playoff spot right now. They went 17 and 29. That's a team that if they got in, which they still can do, let's not get it twisted. The Toronto Blue Jays are sitting at the end of this after getting swept four games by the Texas Rangers, still a game and a half back of now the Mariners for the final wild card spot. A game and a half is something that can 
flip in an instant, as we saw in this four-game series with the Texas Rangers. They can still make the playoffs, but they're not going to do anything. And I hope – I'm not going to say I hope they don't make the playoffs because that's I'm, – I'm still – at the end of the day, I'm a fan. That's why I care so much. But they're not going to do anything if they make it to the playoffs. As I mentioned off the top, they went 0-20 since July 9th in games that they've trade, trailed by three runs or more. And back on the they-can't-beat-anybody train – They've gone 41 and 50 against teams that are above 500. So if you're just remotely talented MLB, if you're just any, any of the, any of the other teams in the MLB and you're remotely talented, you're just above 500 or better. You're just above 500. Blue Jays can't beat you. They're nine games under 500 versus those teams. The team's not real, guys. This team gave the illusion of a good team because we saw the names. We saw what we thought we had. And then, but what it comes down to is at the end of the day, they, they, they can't get a hit in any big moment. They can't win a single game that they need to win. They beat up on the bad teams and any team that's remotely talented, they lose. And when push comes to shove, this runs from the top down. I blame the players for their inability to do anything and give any kind of effort and show up just some average hitting would have got this team in the playoffs average hitting with this pitching would have got this team into the playoffs you better believe that i blame the players for this a hundred percent their cold bats are inexcusable i blame the manager john schneider i'm sorry john we all loved it when you took over for Charlie Montoya, and you had a terrific, you had an absolutely terrific season last year as manager. When when Mr. Montoya got fired, John Schneider went forty six and twenty eight. That is fantastic after taking over midway through the season. And we all know what happened in the playoffs. Like that's a part of the narrative too. But like I'm not putting that all on you. You had a great regular season. You deserve to come back. But this season. Time and time again, all you know how to do is put the wrong guy on the mound. All you know how to do is leave a guy in a couple innings too late. How many times can you count where you're saying, ah, you know what? Tim Mesa probably should have come out a couple pitches earlier. You know what? I don't know if uh, Hunjin Ryu has his stuff tonight. Maybe he should probably come out in the like fifth inning instead of leaving him into the sixth. And, but without fail, John Schneider loves leaving guys in. Like, that's my biggest complaint. I, I'm okay with some of the pinch hitting stuff. Like, tonight, Espinal going in there and pinch hitting, I didn't, I didn't really like it. But I get it. But the pitching, st- I blame John, John Schneider, and I think he's got to go. I think you need a fresh set of eyes because I think at the end of the day, Ross Atkins needs to go as well. It's been enough time. Ross Atkins hasn't won anything. Literally, if if we're counting playoff wins, he literally has zero playoff victories under his belt as general manager. So if I'm going on the who I blame here, we, we've got the players. They didn't show up. We got the manager. He can't make a right decision. And we got Ross Atkins, the general manager, who hasn't won anything. And in 2021, if you forget this, in 2021, Shapiro gave Atkins a five-year extension for winning nothing. I don't know how it's excusable for Ross Atkins to have a job at this point when all he's done is built teams that underperform. The 2018 team underperformed like crazy. Same with the 2019 team. That 2020 team was a lot of fun. They snuck in, but then they lost in the playoffs and got swept. Last year, that debacle in the playoffs, like we'll talk about that again. Embarrassment. And then this season, you have a collection of guys who you expect to be able to hit the ball and they can't do anything. General manager's got to go. It's, it, that's it. Shapiro gets one, I guess. You always give the guy above the, him the chance to fire the guy below him. So I guess we, we give Shapiro that one. But if we're doing the who's to blame here, I blame Rodgers for letting Alex Anthopoulos leave. Like, that's, that's what we come back to. AA was awesome. AA is one of the greatest baseball minds we've, we've seen in the game like the, this, this, since the 2000s, this century, all he's done is gone places and win. And, and even his final year, it was the best Jays team that we've had since the World Series teams. And they let him go. And now he's just happy 
winning the World Series with that with the Braves and being the best team in baseball. So you got to blame Rogers here for making the decision to bring in Shapiro and Atkins. Everybody is to blame in this organization from the top to the bottom. It is an absolute mess. And that's how you get this collection and this group of players who can't do it, who lack the ability to get it done in any important moment. The Jays stink this year, and it sucks because there were so many hopes coming into this season. It sucks because the way last year ended and you come back this year and you're like, okay, the pitching's going to be great. They're going to figure it out. And Alec Manoa, we can't even, like, that's a whole other conversation about Alec Manoa quitting on this team. Alec Manoa, if you don't know, was sent down to Buffalo, uh, what was it, early August after they tried to rehab him at in the majors, get his stuff back. The third runner up for the Cy Young award last season. And then the reports that came out this week was that he was upset with the blue Jays for sending him down. He was upset because they send him down for performance reasons, but his performance was awful and he's not a major league pitcher right now. And he's upset at the team. We don't need to get into all the minutia of that, but that's a disaster. And even with that disaster where your ace coming into the season was unusable and complained about going to Buffalo and wouldn't report. Even with that, the pitching was fantastic. And you couldn't get anybody to hit the ball. You couldn't get anybody to hit with runners in scoring position. You couldn't get anybody to up their slugging percentage to make this team competitive in any way. And that is so unbelievably disappointed and short-sighted of management. I asked for questions on Twitter before I started recording, and I just want to say the Blue Jays need to think about PJ McDonald. PJ McDonald tweeted me, why did I pay $1,100 to be here from Nova Scotia? And I have to stay an extra night because of the pending hurricane. PJ paid $1,100 to watch this garbage team. And if they had any self-respect... They'd go give that man his money back. Every fan in that stadium who was booing and every fan who didn't show up because there was a lot of narrative on Twitter about, oh, you know, the Rogers Center crowd, like these are the lowest crowds of the season. Why would you go watch this team? Look what the what the look what they put up on the scoreboard. That place should have been empty. PJ should have stayed home. I went to the game on Tuesday, and I want my money back that I paid for the hot dogs. I bought six of them. I want my six bucks back. Awful team. I'm glad it's over. It's not over. Like, I'm saying I'm glad it's over. It's not over. We got a half a month of a season to go. The Blue Jays got to face everybody in the AL East coming up for the next three weeks. And what do they do? against good teams, they lose. So it's going to be a lot of pain or they're going to do something, get your hopes up and tease you like it's been. And I'm going to be back here yelling when they fail again. That That's it. I think that's it for me. Um, that's it for the podcast today. I'll catch you on Sunday night, Monday morning. Hopefully we'll just talk football. Hopefully the Jays, like, hopefully they just close the season. You know, what if they come up with a new rule where they just don't play anymore? Hmm? How about this is the end of the season? This, we just count with it. We say 162. We'll prorate it. They missed the playoffs by three games. Let's say that. Everybody agree? I feel like the fans should get to vote. If we want to end our season now, we should get that option. We should get that option. All right. I'll see you on Sunday. Thank you for being here. You could have been anywhere in the world, but shows me here listening to this podcast right now, and I appreciate you for that. Oh boy, this team. And that is how it's done. The Jesse Blake Sports Report with Jesse Blake. Jesse Blake, the guy that likes to hear his name twice in one sentence. Sure, I know him. No, he doesn't have an ego at all.